Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 concerts ruined by morons. Pete said something into the mic and just threw it down, walked off stage. Axel didn't want to be outdone. And that's when all hell broke loose. For this list, we'll be looking at the worst thought out decisions and planning that messed up concerts, whether from the manager, audience members, or performers themselves. Catch any poorly planned or terribly executed concerts we missed? Please write about them in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Smash Mouth vs. Bread you may be wondering, why was Bread involved in a concert? Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Well, the concert was being held at a food festival in Colorado. And unfortunately, a vendor had decided to give out free loaves of bread. That's right, loaves. Drunk audience members started throwing slices of bread everywhere. And some landed on the stage. Smash Mouth's lead singer Steve Harwell went berserk right as the band was playing the introduction to All Star. Come on, somebody throw one more thing at me right now, and I'm gonna find you out. Okay. While the band kept repeating itself, hoping for the song to start, Harwell shouted curses and threats at the bread throwers. Finally, fed up, he headed down into the crowd, presumably to administer a beating to several audience members. Thankfully, however, he was stopped by event security. Number 9. Britney Spears Objects to Smoke At a concert in Vancouver, about 15 minutes into her set, Britney Spears suddenly walked off stage. The audience was left waiting in the dark, confused. Someone made an announcement that the show would begin again when the stage was cleared of smoke, and everyone was reminded that it is a non-smoking building. The performers will not resume until the air clears. About half an hour passed, during which hockey intermission music played over the speakers presumably intended to be soothing, but apparently somewhat annoying. Spears returned and began to sing. But then, toward the end of a song, she abruptly left the stage again. When she came back for the last time, her parting advice to the frustrated audience was, don't smoke weed. <laughs> Number 8. Nickelback vs. Rocks In 2002, while playing a set in Portugal, the band Nickelback was pelted with rocks and bottles from the crowd. How the hell do we wind up? No one really knows why, but given their behavior, it seems like most of the audience came to see a concert by a band they hated. After weathering two songs under this barrage of hard objects, lead singer Chad Kruger asked the crowd a pointed question. Up to you! You guys want to hear some rock and roll or you want to go home? When he was answered with a bottle to the back of the head, Kruger and the rest of the band simply left the stage, though not without directing a couple of middle fingers towards the audience. Not like you. Number 7. Justin Bieber Objects to Screams Normally, screams from the audience at a concert are a good thing, but maybe not so much when you're trying to deliver an impassioned speech about everyone's purpose in life. And the reason why I named it The Purpose Tour is because I simply wanted to remind everybody that everybody has a purpose. A little trite, perhaps, but hardly worth screaming at. However, Justin Bieber had to plead with the audience members to stop yelling and making noise during his talk at a concert in Manchester, England. When the screaming still didn't stop, Bieber angrily stormed off stage. <laughs> Apparently, this is not a new issue, as Bieber has told British fans in the past to shut up and be quiet and listen. Bieber did eventually return to perform, but claimed the Manchester audience couldn't handle him. Number 6. Limp Biscuit at Woodstock 99 Let's start off by saying 
There were a lot of poor choices made by people involved in Woodstock 1999. That's some of the fattest shit I've ever seen. No one band is to blame for the assaults, damage, and chaos that occurred. However, Fred Durst of Limp Bizkit definitely made one of the worst decisions of the event when he told an already revved up crowd to start breaking things. Many people took him at his word, tearing apart sound towers and crowd surfing on the metal pieces. You've been saving your energy, this is time to let it out. Medical tents were swamped with people who got injured in the mosh pit. By the time the band actually started playing break stuff, the crowd was way ahead of them. It's just one of those days. It's all about he said, she said bullshit. The festival later ended with riots and a huge fire. Number 5. Nirvana Objects to Crowd Behavior For a 1992 concert in Buenos Aires, Nirvana hired an all-female band called Calamity Jane to be their opening act. The audience treated them horribly shouting obscenities and throwing mud and rocks until they left the stage in despair. I think lighters and lots of dirt, I don't know dirt money, and peso ice, or money, spit. yeah. Lots of spit. Lots of spit on Gilly, unfortunately. A whole circle of spit. At first, lead singer Kurt Cobain wanted to cancel the show, but instead, Nirvana decided to give the audience a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> They played unfamiliar, experimental songs that hadn't been released yet, and to top it off, before every number, Kurt Cobain would play the introduction of Smells Like Teen Spirit, but then segue into a different song. Whether the crowd knew it or not, their rudeness led to one of the most unusual concerts Nirvana has ever given. Number 4. Guns N' Roses and Metallica in Montreal This disastrous concert began with Metallica's James Hetfield getting horribly burned by his own pyrotechnics and having to be rushed to the hospital. There was an incident with uh, the pyrotechnics. Unfortunately, James uh, is on his way to the hospital right now, and we're very sorry, but we can't continue the concert. Then, the audience had to wait over two hours for the famously unpunctual Guns N' Roses to show up. Unfortunately, frontman Axl Rose had been having vocal problems throughout the tour, and whether it was due to this or problems with feedback in the building, Guns N' Roses also left the stage after only a few songs. We had just stopped the tour because I had throat problems. Came back and I realized I'm going to hurt myself. Right. I told Slash two more songs. If it's not, if we can't get it fixed, I got to go. You know. The audience went mad with rage, rioting and looting until they were finally subdued by Montreal police. That's when all hell broke loose. So the kids start freaking, turn over cop cars, fighting the police, burning everything inside. People just storming into the grandstands and destroying everything. Several people were injured and Guns N' Roses ended up being banned from Montreal's Olympic Stadium for life. Number 3. 2021 Astro World Festival One of the worst things about this recent tragic event is that in hindsight, it seems easily preventable. At 9 o'clock in the morning, a security breach let thousands of unregistered fans into the stadium. An activity log from the Houston Fire Department noted trouble throughout the day including 54 patients being treated by medical staff before 4 p.m. and dangerous crowd conditions throughout the afternoon. By the afternoon, there were hundreds of reported injuries and the Houston police described dangerous crowd conditions. Then, when Travis Scott came on stage at 9 p.m., audience members made a mad rush toward the front trampling everyone in their path. Those at the front of the crowd were being pushed up against this security barrier at the very start of the show by the rapper Travis Scott. Because of all the lights and noise, Scott himself claims he was unaware of what was going on. By the time it was over, eight people were dead. Exactly who was responsible for this tragedy is hard to say, but clearly the event should have been stopped before that point. The show ends around 10-12 with Scott closing it out running about 72 minutes in all, and continuing about 42 minutes after police first reported that multiple people had been trampled. Number 2. Great White Concert Fire This is another tragic event where one can't help feeling amazed at the poor planning involved. In 2003, the band Great White was playing at the Station Nightclub in Rhode Island. 
The club was a small, single-storey wooden building. It had no sprinkler system and didn't have a licence for pyrotechnics or firework displays. Just seconds into their first number, the road manager set off a pyrotechnic fire near the stage, which ignited soundproofing foam in the walls and ceiling. The band had just started playing. Ironically, the man taking these pictures was shooting a video about safety at pop venues. Then the pyrotechnics ignite the ceiling. The cameraman is already backing away. In a matter of minutes, it grew into a deadly blaze that claimed the lives of 100 people and injured far more. Letting off fireworks in a small indoor space may seem unwise enough. However, it was revealed later that the club was also crowded beyond capacity and had no sprinkler system. There was no malicious intent on anybody's part. You know, it was just a horrible, horrible accident. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Fire Festival As a fitting end to our list, this was a highly promoted concert series that just didn't happen. Fire Festival was billed as a glamorous vacation on a remote island in the Bahamas, with lots of music, food, and fun. This was not exactly what the guests found when they arrived. First, their luggage was dumped out of a shipping crate in the dark. Next, they got a meal consisting of bread, cheese, and a small salad. There was a tent city for sleeping accommodations. Craziness going on everywhere. Nobody knows what to do. All the resorts nearby are sold out. It's, it's, it's an actual disaster. No concerts ever occurred. The organizer, Billy McFarland, had scammed everyone who bought tickets. Not to mention hundreds of island workers who had devoted their time and money into preparing for the event. Some locals in Exuma who provided the festival with services are still owed more than $100,000 by the festival's organizers. More like a dumpster fire than a festival. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.